Good morning. Um, I'm going to bake Rodney's rhubarb pie. And thankful of thanking him for cleaning out our furnaces when he's a busy guy and uh, really appreciate all the hard work he did. So um, to start off, I'm going to make sure I preheat my oven to four, yeah, 450. So first I'm gonna make the uh, pie crust dough. I have three cups of flour in this pot and I'm gonna add to it one cup of shortening use Crisco. As Loretta Lynn would say, Crisco do you proud every time. <laughs> and then I'm just going to cut it with a knife for, for a bit. And then I have this neat tool. And I use it for other things too, but it's really handy for making dough. it in until it's all crumbly. Oh, so that's what it looks like. It's just kind of crumbly. Looks still like a bit like flour but it's just got the shortening mixed in really well. Okay, and I'm gonna take two cups of that. I had some left over from another time, and, and when you have dough like this, you can just store it in your cupboard like this in a sealed container and then use it the next time you make pie. That's why I like doing this way rather than putting egg in my pie crust because I just always have leftovers and I like to be able to use them without having to put them in the freezer. If I put them in the freezer I just forget about them. So, Okay so I'm making a pretty big pie. I have a pretty big pie plate so that's another thing you have to keep in mind. How big of a pie are you making? But this one's really deep. This is one I gave my mother-in-law when I was dating my husband. Um, and she really liked it because it worked good for rhubarb pie and apple pie, which is nice to have a deep pie plate for. Okay. So then I use a fork and I make a well in the middle of the pie dough. And when I make my first crust, I don't worry about making too much because I can use it for the next crust if I have leftovers. And then I add water. And this is where we have problems because my daughters are like, well, how much water, mom? And I'm like, I don't know until it looks right. I usually fill up the well. Um, so I measured out half a cup to see if that's how much I actually use, but it should be cold water for sure. I usually do it right out of the tap. And I usually use this bowl, it's my favorite bowl. It's just the right size for making pie dough. Um, and uh, yeah, so I had two of these, so I gave one to my daughter that got married because she's like, Mom, I can't <laughs> bake pie crust without that bowl. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll give you my, my extra. So, all right, so I'm gonna put in half a cup and see what that does. Uh, I think it's a bit too much, so I'm not gonna put it all in. And we'll see what that does. If it seems too wet, and this is where it's tricky, pie crust is, you can't just hand someone a recipe and say, here you go, make pie dough. You have to practice and you have to have someone show you nearly. But it just, you just watch it together and you don't want to overwork it and over mix it. You're just trying to stick it together. So that one's a bit wet. I think I could have went with a bit less water, so maybe a quarter of a cup. And then I'm going to take flour. And I'm going to spread it all over my work area. And I'm going to put some, and I kind of make a nice round circle. 
with a little hollow in the bottom. I kind of work, just gently work it into a circle. And then I set that here. And then I put flour over top and on my rolling pin. Okay. And you just start in the center and you just keep turning it because you don't want it to stick. And you just get it started nicely like that before you start flipping it. And you just want to keep working it so that it's round. You push from the center out. And just getting that right pressure is really a trick. So now I'm going to turn it over, kind of pull that flower to me under it, and then put some more on the top. And I'm going to just keep working this out till it's the right size. And if you're not sure, you stick your pie plate on the top, and it should stick out from the edges a bit because you know it has to go down in. So we'll see what it looks like when I think it's right. My mom was a great pie maker. When she met my dad, she was working in a diner where she made, I had to stop there for a minute. My son came in the kitchen, freaked him out. All right, so keep flipping it, adding a bit more flour, not too much. You just don't want it to stick. Anyways, my mom, was a cook in a diner out in, uh, oh, where was that? Near Briarcrest Bible School. Dad was going to Briarcrest Bible School when he met her. And um, she made pies. She'd make 25 pies before six o'clock in the morning every day. And um, was really good at it. So anyways, oh yeah, I'm gonna measure this out. This to me looks like the right size. So it, it hangs out about two inches on each side of the pie plate. So now you fold it in half gently and you bring your pie plate in and you set it into the pie, pie plate. You do not want to break it. You can fix it, but it's better if you don't. You just kind of work it down into your corners. Like that. Okay. Good. All right, so that's what it looks like. I made it a little thicker because I'm making rhubarb. I like thin crust, but rhubarb needs a little bit thicker crust. Um, so that's what that looks like. And now I'm going to take my knife and you just kind of have a knife, regular butter knife, and you just cut on an angle around the edge, and you just spin your plate away from you, knife towards you. My girls are left-handed, so they uh, have to do it the other way. <laughs> All right, and then I have a bit of leftovers. That's okay, I'm gonna use it in the next crust. So I'm gonna make two pies today always worth it to make two when you're at it. At least two. So I'm going to take that pie dough and I'll just put one and a half maybe in this time because I have the leftover pie dough approximately. So it kind of looks like that. That's usually about how much I put in. All right, and then I'm going to try a different amount of water this time. That's at a quarter cup, so we'll see what that does. I'm not used to measuring very much. So yeah, you can kind of see how I pour it into the well. And it kind of fills up the well, not quite. I don't think that's quite enough, but we'll see. I can always add a little more and mix it in. Yep, that looks pretty good. It's not quite all sticking, but I think it will when I... Well, I don't know. 
Need a little more water. I'm just going to put a dash in. So I think a third of a cup is probably right with two cups of pie dough. And again, don't work it any more than you have to. It's not Play-Doh. You're not making, having fun with Play-Doh. You're just you're making pie crust and it's very tricky. When I first got married, I made one a day for a while just to get into the practice of it. My husband loved pie. I'd made it with my mom at home and mom was really good about letting us make a mess and learning in the kitchen. So I really appreciate that now because I don't like necessarily watching people make a mess in my kitchen, but I knew it's something that's necessary if you want anyone to learn to cook. Pie's kind of like art. You just have to practice till you till you get it. Usually people don't mind letting you practice on them, so <laughs> to make pie. Okay, so this crow pie pie plate isn't as deep. I'm not as happy that I have to use it, but it will be fine. Again, about two inches around. Yep. Fold it in half. Lay it in. What it looks like. I'm gonna cut around the edges. Okay, there's that. Cut the edges around. Looks good. Set that aside. Now I'm going to make the crust for the tops and reuse that crust again. I'm going to use a little less this time because I don't want as much leftovers on the top. It doesn't make it take as much crust to make a top. All right. So that was a quarter cup and I didn't put it all in. Because I used less crust, so less dough, I mean. Well, I have to get the messy part all done before I put the filling in. My hands get pretty covered with pie dough. Stretching it out. I hope it's the right size. It doesn't have to be as perfect because if there's holes on the top, it doesn't matter. But that looks about right for that one. So fold it in half, and then what I do is I make holes with my knife in a nice pattern. Okay. the pattern there we go and then I'm just gonna fold it in half and set it aside so maybe one and two thirds cups and this will be my last crust so I'm hoping not to have too much left over almost a quarter of a cup. If you put in too much water and you see it right away that it's too wet, you can add more of the pie dough stuff to just get it. I think we're gonna need all that water for this one. It's just a real feel you get. And it's only through trial and error and making lots of pie that you'll get it. It still doesn't feel wet enough. I'm gonna put all the 
water in. Sometimes you can use some of the pie crust for for, um, for keeping it from sticking too, and it makes it flakier when you do that. Yeah, this one's gonna be a bit on the dry side, but it's still a sticky spot, so I still have to put flour on. steam escape when it's cooking, fold it in half again, and set it aside. Okay, now it's a clean up. I always clean as much of the dough off as I can, because it's really messy to work with once it gets wet, because it's got that shortening in it, right, so it's greasy. chef tool and I use it for scraping stuff off of things that are hard to crust on. It's really great to get as much as this scraped up as you can because when you use a cloth on it it just sticks all in your cloth and it's hard to get it even out of the cloth then. So I find this is just I just make sure my cupboard is nice and clean before I start and I and then I just scrape it before I wash it when I'm done. There. You want it heaping full because it really settles when you make rhubarb pie. because I like it on the tartar side. So maybe a three quarters or a bit more. And I would say about a quarter cup of flour. Sure, not quite a quarter. That's for thickening. And you mix it all through really well. Okay, I'm gonna pull over my pie plate. That's what it looks like when it's got egg and flour and sugar in it. I'm gonna dump that in. can add some more rhubarb to the top because it's by rights about everything in there it needs. And I want it good and full. This 
a big pie plate, so. There. Okay. I'm gonna take some water. And I'm just gonna wet the edge of the pie plate, of the dough on the pie plate, just so that it'll stick. I'm gonna dry my hands good before I put this on. Okay, now I'll put this on. Okay, place it down. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's good. I'm happy with it. All right, that's what it looks like. And then I'm gonna have flour handy. And I'm gonna dip my, my fingers, those th the thumb and tooth first fingers, into the pie dough, into the flour, I mean. And I'm going to pinch, pinch, all the way around the crust. And I'm gonna keep wetting, putting my flour fingers in flour so that my fingers don't stick to it and pull it back. And I'm just gonna keep going around and pinching it. I guess it's actually just the thumb and the first finger. There, and it's all the way around, it's all pinched. See that? Okay, and then where's my knife? Right. I'm going to clean up the edges. And some of them have a, a pie plate handle. This one doesn't, it's the same roundness all the way around. I'm just gonna cut the edges off with my knife, make it nice and neat. Okay, there, that's what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for now. So I'm gonna put them in at the same time. And I'm gonna make rhubarb ready for the second piece, for the second pie. have trouble sometimes with my rhubarb overflowing in my oven when it's cooking and it starts to bubble and it'll overflow so sometimes I put a pan under it or a piece of tin foil just to catch that all right and this one has handles so you see that so I cut on top of that handle and then I go around cut my edges off another pie all done ready to go in the oven all right so I have my oven set at 450 it's hot enough and they want you to put them on the bottom rack for 10 minutes at 450 so I'm gonna do that wasting too much. She didn't waste water. She didn't waste anything if she could help it. So she would take those leftover crust pieces that were on the outside edges. There's not much left. That's all I had left over. Um, and she would roll it out. And this is where we learned how to make pie. She'd give us this to work on. 
and it's not going to be as nice of a crust because it's been worked too much but it'll be okay and we will work it out kind of oblong shaped like that and then we make holes in the one end and then we would get jam and that would be our filling you could use whatever you want the sedge okay and then we fold that over and we would fold kind of fold up and pinch the outside edge and we'd make a little pie like you get at McDonald's <laughs> there's my little pie I'll stick that in this pan and then I'll put it in the oven too. The timer just went. So I'm going to turn my oven down now. It was in for 10 minutes at 450. And I'm going to turn it down to 350. 45 minutes. So that's what they look like now. This little pie I will take out a lot sooner because it won't take as long. What you're looking for is juice coming up in the edges that's really thick and the crust being just slightly golden. Okay, I'm going to check these pies. Little baby pies, lightly golden. You can see that. I'm, I'm Pretty confident that it's done. I'm just gonna take it out and let it cool. And these ones are starting to come. You can kind of see it. They're getting, the crust is getting browned a little bit. But we need to see the sauces coming up and bubbling along the edges and out of those holes. So we'll leave them for another yeah, another 20 minutes to go yet anyway. So Timer's nearly done. I'm just gonna check the pies. I don't know if you can see that, but there is all liquid here around this pie. There. But it is not thick, it's just watery. So, another 10 minutes probably. Okay, timer's gone again. I'm gonna check again. It looks to me like the one pie that's not as thick is done. Um, the uh, it's kind of mm, yummy. It's bubbling. The sauce is bubbling, and it's thick. See, it's kind of mm, so good. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to take that one out. And leave the other one in. Oh. A bit longer. Another five minutes maybe. There, I took the other one out. It seemed to be done too. And it took about an hour, I think, to cook them both. Um, the one on the left there was a little smaller. It didn't take quite as long. So, yeah, we're gonna eat these tomorrow after church for our Sunday dinner when the family's all here. We're gonna have the one on the right. It was made with uh, rhubarb from another year. And the one on the left I'm gonna send home with Rodney um, and it was made from this year's rhubarb. We'll see if we can see a difference. Alright, thanks for watching the video.